Okay. So I thought I had extra mat board at home, but I didn't. So I'm just going to use this piece of cardboard, and we'll pretend that this is your lovely art piece. Okay. So the typical rule of um, a frame you would borrow a pencil is that you do uh, a three-inch border all around the piece. That's just standard. And three inches is nice because if you do a mat and then you want to get a frame later at a frame shop, um, you can, like, the frame will overlap a little bit on the mat. Yeah. So then you can, there's still like a nice little gap. Okay. So what you do, the first thing you do is you just measure your paper. And this one is the uh, 9 by 11. So I know that I need to add 6 inches to the side, right? So that's like 15 by 17. So, you know, then you just like mark your, you want to preserve as much factory edge, right? So I do have 17 this way too, right? So you can either score with your with um, score a little spot on on 15 inches with your knife, or make a little mark. Um, I prefer a carpet knife to an exacto because like they're, uh, they're a little more sturdy. But I'll just show you with the exacto now. So the way you cut is you don't try to get it in one you don't try to get it in one go, right? You want to do like a light score and just set the groove for your next cut and then just repeat until you get through and you don't have to put a lot of pressure on there like if you put a lot of pressure the chances are that the blade will slip and if you're cutting somebody um, if you're cutting or so, something like really big cutting somebody <laughs> you shouldn't cut people especially yourself uh, Okay, if you're cutting something really big, what you do is you start with your, with your fingers, like, right next to the cutting surface, then you inchworm down and continue, right? Being very careful not to slip and cut your own hand, right? But if it's something small like this, you can just kind of put enough, put a lot of pressure on, the, <coughs> on that. And then when you get through, right? Can, with cart with board, you can do this. You can pop it and then cut from the back. And if your intention is to like, is to frame, that's fine too. Does anybody have a decent exacto blade with them? This thing's old, old, old. I have a box cutter. Yeah, that'll work. I prefer yeah. box cutters. Okay. <laughs> At least if you don't prefer box cutters. No, I prefer box cutters to exacto blades. I'll do the same thing. No. <laughs> They're razors, right? Yeah. They're, you know, the blades are made so in the same sticker, pattern. I guess. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Okay. We'll see if this one's a little bit better. Maybe. So anyway, once you have the once you have the groove, you don't have to like worry as much. Okay. I'm almost through. You can feel the spots when you're doing this. Um, you can tell by sound that the, the uh, when the exactors are getting dull because it'll make this kind of like sound as you go. It should make a nice sound. Um, so then, when you want to, if you want to go by um, go by the the scoring method, same thing. You just go up to your measurement. And then you put a little slice. And what I like about this method is then you can, um, on the little slice, you can find the groove, put the thing there, and then the ruler's in place. And then you just line it up on the other side. Right. So you hear the difference? <coughs> Okay. So don't try to cut it all in one go. So now what I what I do next is uh, you know make sure that it looks right. 
just kind of eyeballing it. So I'm going to go with the landscape this time. So what I do is I then come over a little bit and measure uh, just like above three inches. So I'm going to do like uh, two and like basically a sixteenth in, inch shy of, of three inches, right? Because when something is a little above center, it appears to be visually centered when it's hanging. Like if you put it dead center, it will actually appear to be low on the map board, which is really strange. So go a sixteenth to an eighth, eighth inch higher. And then what I do is on that level, then I'll just go exactly three inches in. Okay, so now what I've done is I've drawn a little, a little thing where when I'm laying my drawing down, I can line up on those, right, for my final placement. See it? Okay. So that'll be, that'll, that's how the final placement will work. And there's several ways to actually do this. I brought this kind of funky tape, which is the first one I got grabbed. So this method, I'll show you two at the same time. Right here, this is this is uh, the T method. So you take two pieces of tape, you oppose them, and make a T. So you put the sticky sides together like that. Then what you do is you take the horizontal one. And you put that somewhere inside near the top corner, like that. Simple, huh? Yeah. So this way you don't have to roll it. And uh, if you want to, if you want this to last, you can use archival tape. Now, the other thing you can do is uh, I'll show you this. So it needs to be about like that big, maybe a little wider. Is so at the at about the same spot you make a little slit through the um, mat board. And this accomplishes a very, a very much similar thing. <coughs> if you have a very big drawing, you'll want a friend to help you with this. Okay, so what I do now is I put the blade through and I just kind of like work out, work the opening so it's a little, so you can kind of see through it. See how there's like a little gap in there, you see a little light through. Okay. The next what I do is I get a little bit longer of a piece of tape and take the tape and uh, very carefully slide it through. Sometimes you have to get the back a little not too sticky. It can be a pain. Sometimes you have to bend the board. Yeah, there it goes. There it is. Ha, got it. Okay. Then you pull it through, right? If you want to be able to, then stick it on the back like that, so it goes through. Okay. So now, if you want to be able to remove the drawing later, which you may want to, you have to judge by the stickiness of the tape, right? So if it's not too sticky, you don't worry about it. But if it is pretty sticky, what you do is you um, stick it on your clothes and pick up a little bit of lint until you hear it get weaker, right? It's still going to be strong enough to hold your paper, but what you want is, is weak enough so that you can pull your paper back up without um, ripping it. Yeah. So next what you do is you come and you line it up to this top and to the sides, right? And you place there. You want to do this with gloves on, potentially, maybe with a friend, and kind of curve it so that you're not touching the tape as much as possible. Right. Here I kind of caught that a little. 
So if you have problems where this happens, you can essentially do a little mini version of, of this and just do that. Keep it down. Tape, tape likes to kind of curl and bend. So then you just start here and you roll it down and then you just press gently. You know, what you can do when you're pressing is you can take another sheet of paper or something, lay it on top and press so that you don't transfer smudges or anything like that. Okay. Or if you have gloves, that's great too. Anyway, that's it. It's done. Right? Sweet, huh? Yeah. yeah. So that's all you do? You can get, yeah, that's all you gotta do. And then you leave it floating on the bottom because humidity changes will, um, will warp it, right? If you, do, if you tack all four corners down. And I like this, this is called, this is called a mount or a float. Um, you can mat, which is where you actually cut a hole out in the mat. And I generally just have people do it because it's pretty cheap. Now the last detail is I've left those little pencil marks there. So what I do is I take an eraser and just come up under the corners and kill those little marks, right? And this way, you know, if the paper is like rough or, you know, has like a jagged edge, you can kind of show that jagged edge. And this way it shows your approach to the edge on the drawing.